Welcome back. <laughs> Are you having trouble booking Frontier Go Wild flights? Here are some tips to help you find those Go Wild tickets with Frontier Airlines. We have really enjoyed our Frontier Go Wild passes. Um, we bought the year, the, the complete, the whole year pass and started in May. And yep. so far we've done 11 flights. Our Including almost, our last minute recent trip to, to Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. Which was really cool. Check out that video. Check it out above. Yeah. Last year we bought the Frontier Airlines Go Wild Pass for $5.99. And now they have the Fall and Winter Pass. We're Rich and Robin. Follow along on our adventures in and out of our midlife van. And there are 30, we have the year long pass. There are 30 blackout dates. I'm not sure what the blackout dates are with the Fall and Winter Pass. I think they, they, they're there's the like same. 15, yeah, I think. It's, it's so um, you just have to keep that in mind. On the day we posted this video, blackout dates started for seven days. Tip one, how far in advance can you book your tickets with the Go Wild Pass? So there's two rules of thumb. One is if it's domestic, including um, Puerto Rico, uh, then it is the day before. It's one day before, uh, and then, but if it's international, you get 10 days before, so. Yeah. Tip number two, what time can you book your flight that one day in advance or 10 day in advance? So when does that day before start? That is tricky and we, we think we got it narrowed down We think down we got almost. it figured out yeah, now. Yeah, we think so. So, so it, is it 8 a.m. the day before? No, it is midnight. So yeah. let's say 12.01 in the morning uh, of the day before your flight. And that is 12 a.m of the, your departure city. Of the departure city yeah. time zone, that's the most important part to remember. So if your flight is on a Friday at 9 p.m., you could book it. Wednesday slash Thursday. So really at midnight on Wednesday night. When Wednesday night or, goes 11.59, when it goes to 12 a.m. Thursday, you can book that Friday flight. Yes, even regardless of what time Friday the flight is. Correct. Right. So, but, but it has to be in the time zone of the flight you're taking. So most of the time it'd be where, where, you're, at. where you're, you're taking off from. But if but, you're maybe on the edge of a time zone and yes. the airport is in a different time yeah. zone. Yep. Our most recent trip to Costa Rica, we were also trying to book our, our flight back from Atlanta back to Southern California. Atlanta was two hours ahead of, of Costa Rica time. So we were able to book our flights. At 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Yeah, so. On a Wednesday for a Friday it's flight. It's a little tricky. So we've been really lucky that by getting it at so midnight, being able to book and pay for our Go Wild uh, tickets. Tip number three, you can't use the app. Yeah, it's a bummer. They just recently updated the app and they made a lot of changes, but they still don't show Go Wild tickets on there. So if you're only looking in the app, you're not going to find You'll tickets. You'll never find a ticket. Yeah. Uh, so you have to do it in a browser. Yeah. So you could do the browser on your phone. You can. Or you could do the browser on your yeah. laptop, but you cannot use the app on your phone. <laughs> Tip number four. Maybe you're thinking about flying on a Friday, but it's Tuesday and you can't book that Friday flight until midnight, the time zone. The 24 hours before the so flight. So say you're looking at a flight, it's Tuesday, but you're looking at a flight for Friday and you're like, well, is it even gonna be available when that 24 hour window opens for that domestic flight? If you look today on that Tuesday and you say put in what, six passengers? Or up to nine. And then see, is, do they have any tickets for nine people, six people? And if they have nine tickets available, more than likely, you're going to have, once even, you hit that 24-hour mark, you, you probably are going to get a ticket. Even if you're waiting for the midnight. So, yeah. like, let's say it's 11 p.m. Right. And you're kind of like, should I stay up or, or not? You can use that trick. You can put in uh, the nine passengers when you're trying to book it and see if there's any normal or uh, discount 10 uh, tickets available. And if it goes to N.A., then... Guess that, what? That it's oversold. Yeah, that it's oversold. oversold. If a flight is close to being sold out, they're not going to offer the Go Wild Pass. What happens is, according to Jacob, my buddy Jacob, shout out to you, Jacob. So for the normal tickets, 
for the normal uh, Frontier ticket or the Discount 10, they can oversell sell those tickets. And then they will, even though they completely sold out on the flight, they may do three or four extra knowing that people are going to cancel. Right. So those will show available, but if you put in the nine and it's showing not available, then it's sold out. So if you end up getting a Go Wild Pass ticket, it's not a standby ticket. No. You are ticketed. You will be checking in 24 hours prior to your flight and you will be assigned a seat and you will get a seat. If the flight is oversold, like two of the flights we've been on, they will offer voucher travel vouchers, but we didn't take those and we still had our seats. Yes, we did. So the way we understand it, and it could be a little bit different, but the way we understand it is the, if they oversell the flight, what will happen is whoever the last person is to check in, mm -hmm. they will get a boarding zero and they won't have a seat assigned. So what will happen is when they go to the gate, then they'll say, okay, well, you need to wait before we can assign mm -hmm. you a seat. So make sure you get your check-in done as early as, as possible. possible. That 24 hours before the flight. If your flight is at 5.30 p.m. on Friday, then at 5.30 p.m. on Thursday is when you can check in like Robin said, you'll get a seat assigned and then you will get your boarding pass and you should be good. Yeah. So here is a bonus tip. What? So in your Frontier profile, you can select some preferences. Now, if it works, because their website doesn't always work correctly, and thankfully it's worked Sometimes for Rich. Sometimes it doesn't save it, yeah. Is that his preference is front of the plane, and an aisle seat. And I also have in my preferences a travel companion, which yep. would be Robin. And so then what we try to do is have Robin uh, update her preferences to be able to show a front of the plane window seat. But they have not saved my preference. I've been in there a hundred times. We've, so, we've worked with chatting with yeah, uh, the but customer service. But needless still, to say, when we book, we always book two people on our flight so we have one reservation, one confirmation number. So when we check in, he's 95% of the time gotten his request. With the aisle. And the then front. I was just in the middle next to him. One time he got a window instead of aisle, I was in the middle next to him. We've always had seats next it, to each other. In the same row. Next to each yeah, other. Right. And when we've checked in. Yeah. On the go wild pass. But that's if you make it in one reservation. Yes, so, you have and, to and make it one you, reservation if it's multiple people. When you go to make that reservation, like in my profile, I'll do it, and then I'll have it for two tickets. It'll pre-populate my information, and then I'll ask for the second passenger. What I do is I put Robin's birth date and her Frontier number in. Yeah. It'll verify it, and then boom, now the two of us are linked. Another bonus tip mm -hmm. is... Um, in your profile, you can put your Frontier number, your TSA pre-check number if you have that, mm -hmm. and you can attach your companions, which we have, but it doesn't always populate that information for yourself or your companion to your reservation. When you make your reservation, since it doesn't always populate your saved profile information like your TSA pre-check for you and your companion, just make sure it's there before you finish it off. If it's not, because one time I did that, you can, go back. Um, you can WhatsApp them and they will... Um, update that information. So it is 5.23 p.m. on a Wednesday, and let's see what we can find for flights. At the time of this recording, the blackout dates start today for seven days. Well, let's try this out. Let's try this out. But the blackout dates for the 4th of July start tomorrow. Yes. So we can't book a tomorrow flight. We can't do a domestic flight yes. tomorrow. Yes, but we could book an international Let's flight. Let's try international flight. So where so, should we go? So in, let's go Ontario. In 10 days. How about to, uh, how about Cabo? Let's go down to Mexico. And let's try a blackout day uh, is not, the 7th is not a blackout okay, day. So, so July 7th oh. with a oh. one way. So for two adults. Leaving Ontario into uh, Cabo, we're gonna see what we have here. 
sure enough, look at here. So it's actually not a bad, even if you had to pay, huh? Hundred and seventy one dollars. <laughs> yeah. But so you have layover. to go to you have to go to Denver for an overnight layover to get the Cabo. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of a bummer, but yeah. you can't get there. Normally, the Go Wild uh, uh, tickets are going to be fifteen dollars per segment. But international is, uh, they also have extra international airport taxes. So in this case here, you can see, besides having an airport tax for Ontario and Denver, you also have an airport tax for Cabo, and there's also international fees along with that. That's why it starts to add up for international, but still a pretty good price to get down to Mexico. A lot che cheaper than driving. Yep. So, okay, I'm in Denver right now. I wanna come to California. Tonight, is there still a flight available? Oh, yeah, let's check that out. So we got the two adults, and this is for tonight's flight. And we're gonna see that, yes, there is. So it does go through San Francisco. Yeah. And you have a pretty long layover yeah. um, until the next afternoon, but it's $30. Vegas to Denver. For today. And see what we got. I got. I put San Diego in. I don't know how that happened, but oh, good job, Robin. <laughs> so if you're in Vegas and you can get to the airport soon, <laughs> yeah, in the next uh, hour, you can uh, get, get on a fifteen dollar fl flight, flight to San Diego. San Diego. Another tip: when you're looking for where does Frontier fly, mm -hmm. you can go to um, flightconnections.com. And you can put in the airline of Frontier after all the ads if you don't want to pay for it. And then, okay, where do I want to go? I want to go from Las Vegas. Where do they fly? They'll show you all the nonstops. And so you can go to, really? And sometimes really? Philadelphia, which we've done. Yeah, Detroit, Cleveland. So if you're looking for the ultimate freedom to explore North America, Central, Central America, America yeah. and Bahamas. Yeah, which and so Go Wild Pass has been great for us, but you have to be open with your time. You gotta be available last minute. You gotta minute. be flexible. You know, we are retired, so we can go in the middle of the week. Uh, or if we, we try for a Tuesday and that's yeah. not available, then we can try again for Wednesday. Yeah, so I think so, we got a good deal. I think so we got a really good deal. We, so we'll have to see how the rest of the year goes, but so far... Check us in the year and we'll tell you how it all went. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching and subscribe to follow along on all our adventures.